What's up guys? It's your boy Fig here. And it's been a long ass time since uh since I posted anything. Uh no excuses. It's been pretty crazy and I've been pretty lazy. So I just got done with like I don't know, an hour and a half or so of cardio in the gym because I mean I'd rather be outside but it's uh it's a little cold. It's like five degrees now and it's snowy. Let me show you. Yep. I don't know if you saw it very well, but yeah, there it is. Um anyways, today is book of the month and I think this one's really actually for January. I know it's February right now. I'm a little little behind. But yeah, this, this book is actually for January. And the book is Asatru, A Native European Spirituality by Stephen A. Mc, McNallan. So, yeah, anyways, without further ado, welcome to The Rabbit Hole. So I know I'm like pacing around and having a moving background may or may not be distracting. So if it is, I'm sorry. Like I said, I just got done with the gym and I know some people are like super tired and worn out after the gym and things. But for me, whether no matter what I'm doing, whether I'm lifting weights, whether I'm doing cardio whatever I do in the gym, it doesn't matter how intense or anything, I get stupid energized afterwards. So right now I can't really sit still. Plus I haven't showered and I'm all sweaty, so I don't really want to sit anyways. But, you know, I've been feeling the pressure to do this book review. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and push this out here. Well, there's a quote on the back. It says, uh, Asatru is about roots. It's about connections. It's about coming home. So, for those of you, I don't, I don't know what this says on the back, but I'll, I'll just give my perspective really quick. Um, for those who don't know, um, I do practice uh, not a satru specifically, although by McNallan's definition, it would be considered a satru. But I personally don't ascribe to the a satru view of things so but i do practice um heathenry or norse paganism um i, I personally go by heathenry now but for most people they don't understand so when i'm talking to someone about um or when they ask me i will say norse pagan or norse paganism um but even then most people don't know so Essentially, um, it's, you know, the Norse gods such as Thor, uh, Odin, Tyr, Freya, Frigg, um, and a bunch of others, okay? Um, now, Asatru specifically is mostly the Aesir gods such as Thor, Odin, here um and some vanir gods are kind of like honorary aesir gods um anyways i mean read the book if uh, i'm probably not describing it very well right now but um I'll read the back really quick to you guys. It says, when Steve McNallan pledged his loyalty to the gods and goddesses of Northern Europe in the late 1960s, he could have hardly imagined the far-reaching implications of this personal act of devotion. Now, over 40 years later, Asatru, an Icelandic, bleh, 
an Icelandic word that means true to the gods, is one of the fastest growing new religious movements in America. Now, really quick. Back in ancient times, okay, and, you know, until recently, I mean, until really McNallan came out with this book and everything, um, it was not called a Satru. Uh, in fact, even in um, Scandinavia, right, in the Scandinavian countries and territory, um, Odin wasn't even considered the All-Father, right? He wasn't the um, main god. Um, Odin became a part of the Scandinavian um, gods when the cult of Odin came over from the Germanic peoples. They started to spread um, the cult of Odin ideas, and so then... Odin became um, head god in Scandinavia. From my understanding, before that time frame uh, or before that happened, uh, Tyr was largely the the main god, the main sky god. But even then, you're going to have different emphasis on different gods depending on the um depending on your tribe okay so for example if, if your tribe was um closer to the water right or was like uh, a water faring tribe so you know if you were on like a delta or along a strait or just along the coast something like that where you had access to the water and so on possibly even just by a lake, um, you would likely be, one of your main gods would likely be Njord. Um, now there is some controversy when it comes to Njord, but I, w I won't get into that anyways right now. Um, so anyways, let's get back to the book. Um, it says... Sorry for all the ums, too. <laughs> Pretty thirsty. In fact, actually, let me take a drink really quick. I'll put you guys down. Whoop. There it goes. Stay. Okay. <sighs> Super thirsty. All right. <sighs> All right, let's get into this more. Um, all right, in Asatru, a native European spirituality, I like the fact that he does at least describe it as a spirituality. Um, McDowell describes the origin and development of Asatru, its kinship with other tribal and ethnic religions, and the cosmological and philosophical underpinnings of this dynamic and inspiring faith. He outlines the rituals, seasonal festivals, and code of ethics embraced by modern practitioners of Asatru. More importantly, McNallan explains his vision of what Asatru can and must become. Asatru is more than just another empty offering on the spiritual smorgasbord of post-religious America. For men and women of European descent, Asatru is the key to unlocking our vibrant spiritual heritage. All right, so that was the back of the book. Um, just so you guys get like a kind of, well, what they say the book is about, okay? And obviously that's it's spot on. There's a lot of really good passages in here that, oh, sorry, well, trying to work the book with both hands. Hey, there's some pictures too for those of us who like picture books. Um, I didn't have anything in particular that 
I wanted to talk about that was in here. But um, it, it does go into a lot of different things. It goes into um, some of the gods and goddesses, where they came from, um, some of the more questionable uh, gods or goddesses. For example, like I was talking about Njord, um, there is some question where he came from and whether he originated as a Germanic god, as a Scandinavian god, or whether he was adopted from elsewhere um, like some of the other gods were. Um, and and even whether he was male or female. There's, Or maybe he was both. Maybe he was one of those ones that can be either or or was both at the same time. So there's questions about that. Right, um, much like Loki, Loki um, was either or. You know, he wasn't necessarily both at the same time, but he could be either or. Um, so there's things like that, and what there's a lot of different points of view, right? So it, it's like any other spirituality slash religion um now as norse pagans heathens we don't consider it a religion even though per the u.s they would label it that way and it's good that they do just because with the way the u.s is it has to be a religion in order for certain things to take place and in order for certain uh I guess societal legitimizations, right? And uh, so, anyways, going past that, uh, I don't know where I was going with that. Fuck it, man, there goes my ADHD. Anyways, so yeah, wow, where the hell was I going? Holy shit. Anyways. Um, it talks about the year, the calendar, uh, like, like the um, the holidays, if you will. I mean, not really, not really holidays, but like spiritually significant days for, uh, for Norse paganism. Specifically, um, now like I said... Mc, McNallan's definition of a Satru is right the the native European spirituality. Now, technically, right, it would be Northern European spirituality because in the Iberian Peninsula, right, which is a part of Europe, but Iberian Peninsula, which would be Spain and Portugal, um, they did in fact have a different polytheistic spirituality okay um and i mean you go to obviously italy italy had a different polytheistic spirituality now at that time i believe they were very much taken over by the um catholicism at that point and or and or christianity um and so Anyways, but their native spirituality, right, was polytheistic. Um, and, you know, obviously, the right, with the Romans, um, the Greeks, even on the other side, um, also had their own polytheistic spirituality, right? So, and a lot of these different... Um, I don't want to call them pagan, right? But a lot of these polytheistic, European polytheistic spiritualities had interconnecting deities, um, right? As people moved um, and they went from one spot to another, 
from one area to another and different cultures and people came together, things ended up melding. That's why um, while in Scandinavia and, and um, the Germanic areas, there was some, and now anyone who tells you that there wasn't any violence in the conversion of Norse pagans to Christianity, anyone who says that is, is just completely wrong. That, that's historically incorrect, inaccurate. Um, however, to claim that that was the main thing that caused it, I, I can't put validation to that. Was it a big thing that caused it? And some might even say, like I believe it was in the book, if I remember correctly, he claims that the the big uh the viking age started because of that so he claims that one of the main oops sorry about that one of the main purposes or reason that the viking age happened was because of christianity being violently pushed on the germanic and scandinavian peoples Uh, I mean, that's his interpretation. I'm sure there's probably other people who would agree with him. Um, I would say it, it's possibly a factor. Um, I have seen, I've not necessarily seen any concrete evidence that that is definitely a factor or that was one of the main factors in it. Um, but it's possible. You know, it's possible it was their last stitch effort to hold on to their ancestral spiritualities. Um, I mean, as we know that as Christianity came in and, and Catholicism, right, much of the, the pagan traditions came along, right? Uh, I mean, from my understanding... The only true Christian holiday uh, is actually um, uh, the Pentecost. Other than that, Christmas, right? That was partially borrowed from the pagans, right? With Yuletide. Um, in fact, a lot of the symbolisms were also pagan. And they happened to meld and try to uh, make them Christian symbols, okay? Um, with Easter, Easter is probably one of the, is actually probably the most obvious one. Uh, I mean, especially with, I mean, just the name of Easter, right? Coming from Ostara. Um, and the rabbits laying eggs and all these other things. Like, that is quite obviously pagan. Nowhere in there does it scream Christianity. But today, in America, in much of Europe, because of Christianity, um, we see it as a Christian holiday, right? And so, in any case, uh, the book goes into uh, a lot of things, um, Physical things, uh, philosophical things, physiological aspects, and of course, um, metaphysical. So like more, more of the, I don't want to say cosmic, but I, I guess, yeah, I guess cosmic or cosmic, spiritual, you know, that kind of stuff, those aspects uh, of, of ideas. And, uh, but l like I said, um, within Asatru, Norse paganism, heathenry, there are a lot of different aspects, a lot of different spiritualities. Um, Mc McNallan tried to, um, through that book, not saying this is a bad thing, 
but it's just to me it's it's really against kind of the core um of what Norse paganism is um but really tried to what, what do you call it canonize yeah there we go um canonize uh Norse paganism within a Satru and tried to be like okay these are um like the virtues and the principles and values that uh, he he does kind of leave some of that open open to interpretation um so I can't say that he was solely trying to do that um but he he was trying to give a a, a backbone or some sort of a backdrop like um here are some general things coming from the Eddas and, and so on. But even then, the Eddas are, and, and, you know, the poetic Edda and everything, it, they're only as correct as they have been, well, correctly translated and or written down. Because one of the main things that we know of is Snorri Sturluson um, and his writings. But he was a Christian writing about pagan ideas. And so this, this we find has conflict within Norse paganism. And there becomes translation issues not based on language but based on spiritual understanding right so you can see that um in christianity you have god the father right and so odin becomes the all father sorry i'm getting distracted by People actually walking out. It's five degrees outside. I don't know why people are outside walking around. Um, but then, but then you get um, the. Fuck, I can't think right now. <laughs> my my brain's going bye bye. I need some sustenance. Anyways, so you get different cross sections and different things bleeding over. Um, for example, Loki becomes the the equivalent to Satan or Lucifer, right? Um, and he's seen as a bad guy. Odin's seen as a good guy. Um, in true Norse paganism, it's not like that. It's not cut and dry, right? It's not necessarily good and bad. There's order and there's chaos, and both are needed in life. Um, there needs to be a balance between them, right? Um, chaos isn't always bad. Order isn't always good, you know? I, I think I've talked a little bit about this before, but anyways. So, the book is... Uh, this is getting a little long. The book is really good. Um, if you're looking to... I'm not trying to convert anyone, of course... Um, but if, if you're interested and you want to know more about Norse paganism and in general, um, some of the things that we, we might believe in, then this is a fantastic book to read. Um, I don't agree with everything that he wrote, uh, you know, I mean, but we're not going to, right? Uh, I mean, heck, that's why you've got so many different Christian uh, religions out there too, right? Anywhere from Lutheran, um, Mormon, Presbyterian, non-denominational, evangelical free, um, Episcopalian, right? All these different Christian religions, so too in Norse paganism, you have a lot of different spiritualities. Now, Again, McNallan would say every all of Norse paganism is a satru, but you get other people like myself who disagree with that. Okay, to me, um, a satru is 
a specifically canonized version of Norse paganism. Okay. Um, then you have Odinism is another group. You have um, Thursa true, Roka true, um, Vana true. Uh, you have a lot of other different spiritualities within Norse paganism. And some would even say like Thursa true isn't even necessarily Norse paganism. That's a totally different video. But anyways, so, but if you want to get a good general idea of Norse paganism and the Norse spirituality, it's definitely a good book to get. Um, I would recommend reading it. Even if, if you don't, even if you are um, already practicing Norse pagan and you might have differing opinions and beliefs still like if you haven't read it i would definitely recommend reading it um it's it's a good book it's it's very insightful um if you go into it with not just an open mind but an open mind in the sense of not accepting it but trying to understand it and going about your own research, even on the side, right? If there's something that you don't necessarily understand in the book, or you may or may not agree within the book, um, do some extra research on the side. You know, I, I did that too, right? I was going through the book. I, uh, or, I mean, I've already done some research, of course, but as I was going through the book, there's certain things in there that he said that I was like, wait a second, I'm not so sure about that. And so I went, you know, I took my phone, Googled, or uh, looked up someone that that uh, I look to quite often for information. And, you know, I would ask them. Um, and then I would also inquire of myself and think for myself, right, um, about about what it was gather information and think to myself and uh yeah go from there anyways this video is getting a lot longer than i expected so that's the book uh let me know what you think if you have read it um let me know some of your ideas in the comment before below as always make sure you smash that like button for me help me out on the youtube algorithm um, again, sorry for the pacing back and forth. I just, you know, out of the gym. And I'll try to stay still. Yeah, I can't do it. Anyways, um, leave a comment. Like it. Share it if you really like it. Um, and I think that's all. Oh, dude, some dude's riding around on a quad drifting in the snow. <laughs> Anyways, all right. Catch you on the flip side.